Hey kids, welcome to Unit 3, Lesson 4, Array Algorithms, Exercise Number 2. The Cities class contains instance variables for a 1D array of city names and a 1D array of the average annual hours worked by their residents. We're going to use this Exploring Algorithms worksheet to guide us through what we need to do with our code. Before we look at the worksheet, let's look at the code. We have a string, Cities List. It contains five elements, Seoul, Tel Aviv, Istanbul, Los Angeles, and Boston. We have another array, hours worked list. It's an integer, contains five elements, 1967, 1898, 1832, 1779, and 1779. We're instantiating a new object, Lifestyles. It is of the cities class. Looks like it's taking two parameters, city list and the hours worked list arrays. We have two print statements. Are the average annual hours worked in all cities at least 1800? And a question mark. And it looks like it's calling the lifestyles object and the has at least method. And we have a parameter over here of 1800. So it looks like it's saying from our lifestyles object, we're calling the has at least method and passing 1800. Let's go back to the work. Our final print statement here has the lifestyles object calling the city with value method with a parameter of 1779. Let's look at our cities class. We have two private arrays, city names, annual hours worked. We're instantiating one object. It takes two parameters. It looks like there are two arrays here. We have a method has at least, it's a Boolean, true or false, takes one parameter hours. That was the 1800 number we saw on the My Console. We have our for loop here, setting our index at zero, as long as the index is less than the annual hours worked length array, we're gonna progress through our loop. If in the array annual hours worked, at each element's index is greater than hours, we're gonna return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. And down here, we have our final method. It's a string city with value. It's getting one parameter. And I believe that was the 1779 number. We have our for loop setting our index to zero. As long as it is less than the annual hours worked array length, we're going to progress through. If any of the annual hours worked at that index equals the hours, we're going to return that city name at that index. And then we're going to print off average annual hours worked. And then the method annual hours worked at that index. If no cities found, it'll return none found. Let's head over to our exploring algorithm paper to see what we have to do for this lesson. First thing we need to do is draw a visualization of the city list 1D array, include the index of each element. Well, that's pretty easy. We've been doing this quite a bit. We're going to insert a table. We have five elements, so we need five spots and then one for the position. First city is Seoul, Tel Aviv, Istanbul, Los Angeles, and Boston. Now we need to do the index. We start at zero, one, two, three, four. We're going to put these in red and center them. There is our 1D representation of our city list array. Now we're going to do the same thing for hours worked list. We need to insert a, another table. It is also going to be five by two. And let's see if we can remember our numbers. 1967, 1898, 1832, 1779, and I think another 1779. Position zero, one, two, three, four. Let's center them. 
and make them red. There we go. Next question is, next the has at least method is intended to check if all annual hours worked are greater than or equal to the specified hours. What should be returned when 1800 is the parameter? Why? Let's take a look at this method. And has at least is saying if any of the hours at the index is greater than the hours, we're going to return true, otherwise false. But I don't think this works quite right. What I think should happen is if any element in the index is less than the number we give, then we should return false, otherwise true. I think this is backwards, but we'll see in a minute. What should be returned when 1800 is the parameter? What should be returned is false because there are elements that are less than 1800. Let's run the code what actually was returned. Well, let's run our code. It returned true. Just like I thought, kids, I think it was reversed. It returned true. The method does not work as intended. Explain the changes that need to be made for the method to work as intended. Here's a hint. When should the method return true? But do you know that all annual hours worked are greater than or equal to the specified hours? Let's take a look at this code and see what changes we definitely need to make. Again, I think these two things need flip-flopped. So I think we need to flip true and false because right now if anything is less than the hours we should get false and speaking of that i think this is also the wrong assignment operator i think it should just be if any of the hours worked are less than the hours this condition should be true so i think this needs to be flipped as well Let's go ahead and write that. We're going to move the return true statement to the end of the method outside of the loop. We're going to move the return false statement inside the if statement. And then we're going to change the condition of the if statement to annual hours worked at the index should be less than the hours. And I think that's our answer for number five. We're going to head over and test our code now. Back at our code, what do we have to do? Well, I think we have to flip this. So this is going to be false. And this is going to be true. And our assignment operator, which I always get confused, kids, is saying greater than. And it needs to say less than. And we don't want to do equal. We just want any number less than 1,800. Let's see if our code works now. And we got false, so it is working proper now. Again, important to understand what we're actually testing, greater than or less than. Very easy sometimes to flip these operators when we're not thinking. Very important lesson here. Let's go ahead and finish this lesson off. We're going to look and see what is returned by city with value when 1779 is the parameter. 
and it looks like we're getting Los Angeles printed off. Remember, we have two cities, Los Angeles and Boston, both with 1779. What is returned? Los Angeles. Using the space below, write the code to update the average annual hours worked by Los Angeles residents to 1718. This means we have to update an array element. And what array element do we have to update? Well, it is stored in hours worked list. Let's look back at our code and see. It is stored in hours worked list. Los Angeles, if we also remember from our 1D array, is at position three. That means we have to call the array square brackets, the position we want to change, three, and update with the new value, 1780. I think that is the right code, kids. We're going to add our code where hours worked list is initialized and predict what's going to happen. Well, I think what's going to happen is it's going to return the first number that has that 1779, which is no longer Los Angeles, but Boston. I think Boston will be printed out. Let's go ahead and check our code, kids. Let's copy it first. Back here, we have to go right below where hours work list was initialized. And we're going to update our value from our worksheet. Let's put a comment in here and just say updated value from worksheet. When we run, I should get Boston here. Well, let's see if we're right, kids. And we do. It returns the first city that meets that requirement. Remember, if the annual hours worked at that index is equal, equal, or the exact same as the hours, we're going to return that city. Otherwise, none will be found. I think we have one more question on our worksheet. Ooh, let's make this one red two kids. Explain what the method city with value does. Well, that's just what we explained. Returns any city with the exact same value entered. In the value, we should just put hours here so we know. And kids, that is our worksheet and exercise number two. key takeaway from this lesson, kids, again, is just understanding how we traverse through these loops. This exercise taught us a valuable lesson about watching our assignment operators. You have to make sure they are returning what you want them to. In our case, we had both of them flipped, both the true and the false, and the value we were looking for. Very common mistake to happen. This also leads to a logic error because the code's running and not giving us an error. And kids, these kind of bugs can be tricky to track down when you're writing longer code. Hopefully this lesson helped you understand algorithms a little better. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next lesson. See you later, kids. Bye, bye.